Hello, this is a pace setter training video on how to use the copy from project feature in Xactimate to import an external estimating tree into your claim to write your estimate. And then we're going to talk about and look a little bit at the trees and understand some of the differences in an estimating tree that's based on trade versus based on elevation. So we're going to gear this towards affix claims. If you work with affix, uh, this is very important. Again, if you work for any of our carriers that require a certain tree, you will use this function to import the tree into your claim so that you can begin writing the estimate. So I am in a claim right now, and we're going to use the copy from project function within this estimate right here. But first, before we do that, let's go back to my local project list. And I have various projects in here. Um, you'll have some of these in yours, which will be your claim assignments. It may be practice claims or whatnot. I have various claims in here for training purposes, but some of the trees that we use in Affix are already in here. First, you'll need to use the data transfer function within Xactimate to get these trees into your local project list. There's another video we have that you can find on how to data transfer into Xactimate. I highly recommend that you look at that video. It's a short video, but you'll need to know how to do that. Once you do that and you get the trees in your local project list, they just sit here. You don't ever open these projects up, these trees. All they have in them is the tree hierarchy, the grouping tree that you're going to copy over into a claim. But first, again, you have to get them into your local project list using the data transfer function. Again, go look at that other video on how to data transfer in Xactimate to teach you how to do that. So here's our trees here. We'll pick one. We're going to use the classic tree. Let's find it here. Home site, no. Classic tree. Here we go. Affix HO classic tree. This is the one we're going to use copy from project with. Again, we don't need to look at it right now. It's here. We're going to go into the estimate in the claim. So I have the claim open. Let's go to the estimate and let you see what this looks like before you do copy from project. Once you get the claim assigned to you and you open this area, there will be no tree. It's never There's never a tree installed or imported. There's only going to be one folder with the insured's name. You either have to build the tree or import a tree. We're going to import the tree using copy from project. So to do that, go over to the left to your uh, main navigation bar. We're going to select on tools, and then you'll see the option copy from project. So let's click on that. It'll open up a context menu window, and it's asking you in a drop-down menu, what project do you want to copy from? So we know we want to copy from that HO Classic tree that's sitting in our local project list. So let's drop the menu down. And we'll look through these lists. This is basically looking into the local project or my local project list. Here's the one we want right here at the bottom, Affix HO Classic Tree. Keep in mind that based on the profile that you're currently in, you may not be able to see some of the projects that are listed in your local project. Let's say you have projects that were set up by another carrier for Allstate uh, or, <coughs> excuse me, or say National General. If you're in the American Family Profile in Xactimate and you open up the claim, you may not be able to see those projects. So just keep that in mind. You can only see projects in the copy from project functions that are in the current or created in the profile that you are currently in. I am in the American Family Profile right now. I'm in a claim, an American Family type claim. It could be home site. You could use that as well. It still uses the same profile. And we're going to select this HO Classic tree. So we're going to select it. You'll notice that we have a couple of check boxes. The one you're going to want to check is scope. We're going to copy over and replace the sketch, grouping, line items, and attachments in this claim. This is why it was so important I mentioned briefly why you need to use the copy from project function immediately when you open the claim. Because if you don't and you open it and you start doing your sketches, for instance, and then maybe you go look and start writing the tree manually. If you forget and you say, oh, I forgot to copy from project, and you go do this feature, it's going to replace all of that. It's going to wipe out all your sketches and estimating tree and replace it with the one that you're copying from. So you don't want to waste all that time. 
So you do this first. Again, I can't emphasize that strongly enough. Open the claim and immediately go to Tools, Copy from Project, drop the menu down, select the tree that you want. For affix claims, for homeowners claims, you can always use this classic tree across all of our carriers for homeowners policies. Select the scope checkbox. We don't need to copy any forms over and replace any forms from that tree sitting in the local project list, that classic tree, because there are no forms in it. We just want to get the estimating tree. So once you check this box, you're going to hit copy. It's going to briefly close the claim you have open, copy it over, and then reopen the claim. So now we have the claim back open. And if we go over to the estimating tree area, we'll see that the tree has now been copied into the claim. So before we end the video, let's talk about the way this tree looks. This is what's called a trade-based tree that we use with AmFam and uh, any affix carriers. It could be Connect, HomeSite, AmFam, or Main Street America. If you'll notice under the buildings, house, or garage, the exterior estimating rooms are named by trade. They're not named by elevation, which you may, may be more familiar with. It's more common in the industry that elevation-based trees are used. That would be something like the exterior would be front elevation, right elevation, back elevation, left elevation, all of the damages you were to write, say, on the front elevation. Maybe you have siding, gutters, window wraps, screens. You would put all those line items in the front elevation room. That is a elevation-based tree. This is a trade-based tree. In this case, you would put all of the damages on all the elevations that were gutters and downspouts. You would put that in the gutter downspout room. You would write all your roofing damages in the roofing room. All of your window screens, let's say. There may be multiple screens on several elevations, more than one. You still would write all of those screens in this one room. We'll talk about that a little bit more when using macros and using F9 notes in the room for the line items to help delineate and separate where they're located on the house. Moving down below these uh, other parts of the tree, we're going to get down to the bottom. Oh, by the way, you'll see on the interior, obviously, these aren't trade-based or elevation-based tree uh, names in the folder hierarchy. These are named by the name of the room, and you can name those as you see fit. That's fine if you decide to build your own tree. Also, if you do decide to build your own tree, if you're doing the exterior, you have to do this and name it and build it by trade. It's required by the carrier. However, we recommend that you just use the trees that we give you when you're onboarded with Pace Setter and use the copy from project function and get this entire tree in there. It's much faster. It's much easier. As you saw, it takes literally less than 10 seconds to get this entire tree in there and then you're done. And then you can begin working in the claim. But moving on, if you look down to the bottom, there'll be some other peripheral folders. This is where you would put your fencing in the fencing room. Painting and staining, don't really worry about this. This is an older remnant that um, AmFam used to use to put all their painting and staining in here to track all of the painting and staining they did with claims across the country. We don't really use that anymore. You can put the painting and staining in the appropriate room that it goes in. Obviously, if that's painting in the interior, you would put that in the correct room. But in the exterior trade base rooms, you would also put it in the correct room. For instance, if you had siding, that was wood and it was painted and you have damage to the paint or the siding and you're gonna paint that elevation, you would also put the elevation paint uh, for that, all the elevations in the siding room because it's siding paint. Uh, going back down to the bottom, tree debris removal, this is where you put all your tree debris line items if trees or limbs have fallen on buildings, structures, personal property goes in this room. Uh, sewer backup damages would go in this room. Food loss would go in the food loss, loss room. And at the bottom, general, this is where you would put your debris removal, your truck or dumpster. Uh, keep in mind that there's uh, another training video we'll have on macros, specifically too for using affix roofing macros that are required. Their roofing macros include a debris removal line item, a dumpster for the roofing, for replacing the roof or slopes. We'll use that to accommodate just the roofing debris. If you have additional non-roofing or non-metal debris, 
and you have enough that will fit in the remainder of that dumpster for the roof, then you don't need to add another dumpster. You can just include that debris to go into that main dumpster for the roof if you have enough left over. If you have a lot of other debris that's non-roofing or non-metal and you can't, in your opinion, fit all of that in the uh, debris removal for the roof, then you can add a second debris removal line item and that goes in the general room. You would put a little note on that explaining that this line item is for all non-metal and non-roofing materials for debris removal. And that is the conclusion of this video. Again, if you have any questions on this or any other processing claims or protocol questions, guidelines, please contact your specific uh, manager for that carrier or claims supervisor, and they'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much and have a great day.